CataractCoach.com. Faco in an eye with a trabeculectomy. Here's some pearls for success in this tough case. And don't touch that bleb. So here's the speculum going in carefully. There's that big bleb. Don't put that fixation ring on the eye. You don't want to damage that bleb. So just using a soft wax cell sponge away from the bleb to help fixate the eye. This is a patient who has a functioning bleb. It works well, controls his pressure beautifully. And the glaucoma specialist sent me the patient to do his cataract surgery. So now when I put the visclasque in, I'm going to put a little bit of a plug there at the opening of the trabeculectomy. So I'm not going to overly fill the eye. Don't get it super pressurized. Now I'm just going to fixate the eye with the chopper and then use the diamond care tome. And notice I'm going to make a little longer incision than normal. We're showing you the whole video at two times normal speed. And the reason is I want to get through the whole case. It took me about 10 minutes. So the video here is going to be about five. And so here we're zooming in. Now the glaucoma doctor said, do me a favor. He says, I do not want a big rexus. He wants a small rexus because he wants to make sure that even if this patient overfilters or gets hypotenuse in the post-op period, he wants that eye well to stay in the capsule bag. So we're aiming for about a four and a half millimeter rexus here. Yes, that's a smaller rexus. So you can measure it out there. Looks like it's just about four and a half. That's going to be a little bit stronger overlap. Now, we're going to make a lot of uh, FACO chops in that capsule bag. And so we're going to not prolapse this nucleus out of the bag with a four and a half millimeter rexus. That's a little too tough. So here comes a FACO probe. Now, you got to be careful on the settings of your FACO machine. You don't want to have a very high infusion pressure. So there's an initial vertical chop. And we're using a little bit slower settings here. Again, we're showing you the video at two times normal speed. Not quite getting the chops that I want. So let me show you a real world, a little bit of a struggle here. Trying to get these pieces out of the capsule bag. Maybe that chop didn't fully propagate. We'll try split it again. Getting this chopper around. Not having the hottest success here. But I just need one piece. There it is. Once this first piece starts to come up, now I'm going to have an easier time. And I'm also watching that bleb during the case. And I did put a little bit of a viscoelastic plug in that area. When we put in our dispersive viscoelastic at the beginning of the case, put a little extra viscoelastic there. Not too much. And I don't want to leave that in the eye. But during the case, I want to have stable fluidics. So in a case like this, you may want to slow down your aspiration flow rate so things happen a little slower. Also drop that infusion pressure. There's the, the epinuclear shell looking pretty good here. And so there's that four and a half rexus that we've talked about. And also look at the incision. Longer tunnel length, that incision is going to seal very well. Now clean up the cortex. In a case like this, you could put an incision, in a suture in your incision, a tenon nylon in that corneal incision if you wanted to. At the end of this case, I'm confident enough that that's not needed. But remember, this eye can get more hypotenuse compared to a typical eye in that post-op period. So polishing up our caps or bag here. And again, looking at that bleb, it's pretty reasonable. Also be sure... When you put in your speculum, your speculum is not going to damage that bleb. And so my speculum, you see the titanium blue arms there, is away from the area of the bleb. Here comes our lens. We're putting a single piece monofocal acrylic lens. I really like to have a monofocal lens in these patients with more advanced glaucomatous disease. And it's also the request of the glaucoma doctor. So this patient's getting in a monofocal lens. is going to have a goal of a plano OU. And this patient started off with a little bit of hyperopia, so he should be very pleased. Now, take out a little viscoelastic. Don't leave viscoelastic in this eye because you don't want to have that post-op IOP spike. So there's behind the lens. There's that rex. You can see it's on the small side as we designed at the beginning. And let's get out all the viscoelastic here, including in that area near the bleb. And we'll um, wash that out too with BSS on the cannula. So sealing up the, the incision, again, nice long tunnel length going in here. And now look, I'm going to inject in that area where the trabeculectomy is just to make sure there's no retained viscoelastic in that area. And that looks pretty darn good. So we can do it again, making sure that it's going to be completely cleared out. I don't want a big plug of viscoelastic blocking that area. Um, of the trabeculectomy outflow. And here's some triamcinolone. Put that in the eye. And you can see as the IOP goes up, you'll get triamcinolone particles going through the trabeculectomy and into that bleb area. So here at the end of the case, just getting a reasonable IOP. We don't want too much of a pressure. And we want to be very gentle on that bleb. So let's drop the pressure here a little bit. And I'm check the incision. It's some tetracaine on a wax cell. Make sure the incisions are sealed up. And then even one step further, which is... Oh, here's the small astigmatic treatment. But one step further we're going to do is we're going to use 
the um, floor scene dye to do a Seidel test, a dye leakage test. So we'll paint everything, the incisions and the bleb, paint it with that dye, the floor scene dye, and then we can see, do we have any leakage? And we don't. So a beautiful case. This patient had a nice outcome, and we did the other eye as well. Thanks for watching.